Welcome back to the Cabin Flip, the freezing cold edition. Today we're going to be installing some baseboard heaters. Check this stream out now that it's covered in snow. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's cold on the mountain today, which is why we're going to be installing some brand new soft heat or hydronic baseboard heaters by Cadet Heating and Cooling. Look at this. I could take pictures and video out here all day. Those are what you would call Polaroids. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Cadet Heating and Air was extremely generous in providing these baseboard heaters for me in this project, but more on them later. Today I'm going to show you how to install them. It's really cold out here, so I'm going to hurry up and transport up right there. All right, we made it to the main level. Let's get inside and install some baseboard heaters. Sorry, one more thing. Every single dollar in ad revenue and affiliate revenue driven from this video will be donated to various charities like Coats for Kids or Coats for the Homeless. There's a couple of free ways you can help. First, hit that like button down below this video. It'll help the YouTube algorithm find it and bring this video to the top. And second, drop a comment on something you liked about this video or a charity name, for example. Let's go. This house has nine baseboard heaters of various sizes with three more located in the crawl spaces to keep the pipes warm. That's a real expensive way to keep your pipes from freezing. May have to go and spray foam this someday. Look at this bad boy, it's like a hundred inches long. Do they still make them like this? Many of the rooms are still under construction and don't even have all the sheetrock hung yet. So we're just gonna install two for now. Anyway, we'll start by removing the old broken ones we have. So here's just a few of the tools you'll need. So this is where your control panel is here where your wires are hooked up and there's one on the other side too. You can actually wire it on either side depending on where your wiring is in your wall. It's just a little flathead. Okay, mine must be on the other side. There they are. Now this is obvious but you need to turn off your power before working with anything electrical. Get your little voltage tester. It's on, I need to turn it off. Breaker panels are never labeled right, so this should be fun. Upstairs bedroom heat, one, two, three. This is important too, this is a 20, this is gonna be a 240 volt, cause it has a double breaker there. There's the 120 volts and the 240 volts. Minus 240, how do I know that? because I'm replacing a 240-er. The one that's in there has been working for 50 years. I can assume that replacing it with the same system will work. The instructions that come with this baseboard heater are actually really intuitive. So just read it, it'll tell you how to determine if yours is 120 volt or 240 volt. It's really simple, the instructions are laid out perfectly. The moment of truth. It worked. It's funny, the room over there when I was replacing these outlets with some newer outlets, it was like downstairs lights and it turned off the outlet upstairs. It's so random. Now there's these little screws down here. You can see one, two, three, four, and it just keeps going all the way down. So just unscrew those. I'm gonna go over a couple more things before I fully remove this. All the screws are taken out already, but this is for the people who are replacing a baseboard and for people who hate reading directions. When you take these screws out, you saw where I took them out, up there and down here, that's where you're gonna put them back in on your new baseboard heater. The other thing you'll wanna pay attention to is the size screw. So these will give you an idea of what was already in there. The instructions recommend wood screws. So you could basically just find something just like this. I will be using a different type of screw temporarily because I'm replacing this carpet. So I'm gonna make tiny holes with tiny screws and then come back later and permanently affix it with some bigger wood screws. Now let's discuss some of the electrical here. So you have your neutral tied into a black. Then you have your power tied into a black. And it doesn't matter which one you connect it to, to the heater two black wires from the heater. You have a black and a white coming from your circuit. It doesn't matter which one you tie into which. It says it even in the directions, but you can see here it's completely random. So just hook it up just like this. You 
You also need a wire clamp just like this back here and you could just reuse the one that you have on this unit or you could buy another one. They're a few pennies. While the paint's drying, let's dive into the technology of these hydronic baseboard heaters. Conventional baseboard heaters turn off and on constantly as the air heats up and cools down. These hydronic heaters by Cadet have a liquid in them that heat up and retain the heat for a much longer period of time. So no more turning on and off and on constantly. Pretty cool, right? These are supposed to be so much more efficient. And yeah, this does contain a liquid in it, but it doesn't require any plumbing or anything. And that liquid is environmentally friendly. If you care about that kind of thing, if you're installing these, you're probably in the mountains or somewhere beautiful. So you probably do care about that. While we're talking technology here, I have this broken bathroom heater on my floor and it's right in front of the toilet so it gets in the way. So of course, Cadet has these wall heaters that are flush with your wall, but I'll be converting that in a few weeks as this is the last bathroom I'm touching in this house because I still need a place to take a shower and go potty. Did I just say potty? My kid just turned two, so I'm using some potty language. I apologize. The room I'm working in is about 150 square feet, so I'll be using a 1500 watt unit. If you're unsure about how many watts you need, you can reach out to Cadet directly or there's tons of information online everywhere about what kind of wattage you'll need for the amount of square footage you have. So here's the unit. My wires are over there, but you can hook up either side depending on where your wires in your wall are. First things first, just get out of the way. There's a knockout punch right there. And now there's not. See, it makes a hole here. And this is where your cable clamp comes in. You need a half incher. I'm just taking the one that I got from the other baseboard heater. While this is turned upside down, I'm gonna take off the end cap. And I'm gonna put it where my flathead pieces are facing out so that way I can tighten the cable. Here's the nut for it. The last bit of preparation is to cut a couple of my wires. The one I'm gonna cut is the one that is looping all the way back around to the right side of this unit. This wire right here is connected to the coils or whatever these are, and is the one that wraps all the way around. Basically, I'm leaving this alone. Everything that connects to this guy alone. There we go, and they're 14 gauge, so I'm gonna go ahead and strip them. They didn't leave me much slack when they built this house on this wire. You can see it's pretty stuck there. So the point though is, and you should try to do this if you can, is butt this up against the wall, run your wire through the cable clamp here, then through the sides here you can tighten the cable clamp with the flathead screwdriver, then you can put your end cap back on, and you still have room to pull this out a little bit to tighten the screw on the back of your end cap. I can't get to the back of that screw, so I'm gonna to have to just put the end cap on, run this cable through, and then tighten it by hand if I can. I have my ground here that'll go to the green screw up there. Then I have my white neutral, which isn't a neutral in this case on a 240 volt unit, which will connect to one of the black wires. And then my other black wire coming from the wall will connect to this other wire. And it doesn't matter which one you hook up to which. Now, if this is a 120 volt unit that you're doing, it'll be white to white, black to black, ground to ground. You'll have a white cable included in your heater. All right, if you've ever done electrical, this probably looks scary to you. You have a white and a black connected together. It's just the way it is, okay? Now let's tuck all of this back. Now it's time to mount this on, so let's find our studs. 
Oh. <laughs> All joke. All joke, I know. You can see they're pretty symmetrical here, so that's 16 inch on center, which is great. And usually an outlet is butted up along a stud as well, so that's a safe bet. So I have all these here, now it's time to pre-drill. I'm going to be using smaller screws at first because I'm taking this off in a few weeks when we get new carpet in here. If you couldn't tell, the carpet is disgusting and stained. Um, but So I'm going to use smaller screws now and then come back with like the eight diameter by two inch. This is two and a half, but I'll probably use two inch screws here and that'll make it a little bit more permanent. No! You don't need that many, okay guys? In fact, I'm only gonna be using about six. Also, as we talked about before, you pre-drill up here and you pre-drill down here, nowhere in between. Now it's time to put the face cover on. You can see the little hook there and it goes in over there and there's one on the other side. Straightforward. Time to flip the breaker and see if it works. I let it run for a few minutes. It feels like it's going. Time to do the other bedroom over there. This is the easiest thing ever. So this thermostat has two wires and I have two separate sets of wires coming into my box. A black here and a black there. And I'm just swapping this out one for one. Just gonna hook it up there and there. You tie your neutrals up together, tie your grounds up together. Let's do it, let's just do it. Make sure your power's off. And I didn't even mention the easiest part of it all. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which. It says they're non-polarized, polarized. I don't know what that means. But it says it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's just too easy. Do the eye test, make sure it's level. I'm gonna go hit the breaker. Try this bad boy out. It's in Celsius right now, so let's go to menu. Fahrenheit. Wow, wow, wow. 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 Wow, look at this. These are great. My other baseboard heaters made weird popping noises and other little things. And believe it or not, these right, at least for now, smell like apple cinnamon, like apple cinnamon oatmeal or something. It's, it's so weird. And look, I'm not trying to sell you on anything, right? They already gave me these baseboard heaters. I don't get commission, nothing like that. It's, it's done. They, these smell like apple cinnamon. It smells so good. So I have no idea what my energy bill will be like, but so far they just look great. They feel great. I mean, having a white clean unit like this that matches the walls and the trim, it's a huge upgrade. Those are just the aesthetic pieces. I'm really looking forward to the functionality of this and hopefully some energy efficiency. Since this episode is about a cabin flip and heating, I'll let you know that I did fix the weather strip under the door, the front door that was just letting in a bunch of cool air. I've also, I'm also going to be flipping out some of the windows downstairs to add some efficiency and some insulation down there. Other than that, I just need to fix the downstairs door weather stripping and 
we should be pretty airtight. But for now, it's a baseboard heater, gas fireplace combo type of night. Also, have you ever seen these little foam things for your outlet? You actually put this behind your outlet and it adds some insulation. So while I'm here, let's do it. Oh my gosh, this heater is so cozy. And the apple cinnamon smell is still there. Again, thank you Cadet Heating and Cooling for providing some of these for me. I love them already and I know my vacationers will as well. Remember, all the proceeds from this video will be donated. So like, comment, and share this video with somebody you know living in a cold climate. I'll take care of the bathroom wall heater here in a couple of weeks, but next week is one of my very favorite projects. And if you've been on my channel before, you already know what it is. You already know how much I love them. Recess lights are on cue. I'm placing them in an existing ceiling for the very first time ever with no attic access. So we'll see how that goes. The asbestos test came back with some iffy results. So I'll have to think through more of that. But for now, I hope to get some solid sleep next to my new baseboard heaters. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button below and I'll see you on the next video in this cabin flip series. Thanks. I'm up here on the mountain alone, so for the back door, I made a little booby trap just in case someone tries to get in. Yeah, they're not coming up here.